Hi, and welcome back to the Cuzzy Sound Channel and part 12 in the series all about my Project 12 DIY Modular Analog Synth. And in this episode, we're going to be looking at the delay module. Really useful effect, you know, a lot of it's great on synths. Um, this particular module, it's based on the PT2399 chip, which is a delay effect in a single chip very few external components and you've got yourself a working delay effects pedal. In fact it's turned up in a whole host of uh, guitar effects pedals over the years. Um, it's been used more latterly in, in um, karaoke machines and things. The first design I tried to put together on this was actually a, a guitar pedal design and I couldn't get it working. Really tiny circuit designed to go inside a small box and I, I, just, I just couldn't get it to work. Um, however, I did find on the Look Mom No Computer website uh, a design that, that Sam had put together. Um, it's, it was kind of one part of what he'd used in uh, his, he's done a, a triple splash bike, which is basically it's three delay modules daisy chained and cascaded. Uh, completely crazy, but then you know, hey, it's Look Mom No Computer. Great stuff. Um, but in this module, I've just basically taken one chip and built a single effects module. So what we'll do, we'll have a look, uh, we'll go over to the computer for a change and have a look at um, the uh, the spec for the 20, uh, PT2399, have a look at um, um, Sam's webpage, I'll put all the links in the description anyway, and then when we've done that, I'll show you what, what controls you've got on the module and we'll have a listen to what it sounds like. This is the data sheet for the PT2399. Um, the description there says it's a single chip echo processor IC utilizing CMOS technology, which accepts an analog audio input signal and a high sample rate ADC transfer. What that basically means is that the echo or delay part of the chip is actually digital. It's, it's, it's a digital delay unit. Um, but it's got an analog input and an analog output using uh, A to D, D to A converters. A bit further down it talks about it having its own VCO. Um, so you can you can change easily change the VCO frequency by changing resistance which gets you your different uh, echo or, or delay times. Um, see the applications here karaoke, mixer, etc, etc, um, are what we're interested in. A musical instrument effector. I like that. An effector. Uh, scroll down a little bit and that's the block diagram of the chip itself which unless you want to get really nerdy we don't have to worry about. And what we are more interested in is an application circuit and this is the application circuit that is suggested to build your own echo effects module, unit, pedal, whatever you want to call it. And as you can see, you, you've got the 16 pin PT2399 chip here, and then not that many external components, all of which are either resistors or capacitors or potentiometers. Um, another pot there so that's it really so very simple very easy way of getting yourself a delay module so that's the chip itself this is the look mum no computer website um, I'll put the link in the description uh, as I said and this is his 2399 three times splashback project so this is all about that particular system um, as I understand it you can you can buy a kit or where you get the the panels and everything in his, in his Cosmo format and build your own triple splash bike That is the circuit diagram for the triple splash bike version. But if we scroll a little bit further down, 
that's the circuit diagram for a single delay module and here he's very kindly given the strip board layout to build a simple single modular delay module and that is the design the layout that I've actually built for my unit and yes that one did work first time so yeah it's great go and check out this look mum no computer website there's quite a few other projects on there and Sam is really good at sharing his ideas and his designs with the community so you can you can if you want to you know take these out and buy his buy his kits and, and put them together that's great if you want to have a go at building and adapting your own then then he gives you all the information you need to do it so yeah that's the one that I took that's the one that I that I built so let's go and have a look at it and hear what it sounds like before we start I'll talk you through the patch that we've got set up and just for those of you who may be interested into uh, how I'm generating the sound that we're going to be playing with. So the sound source is a 4046 VCO, just a single VCO. The CV input is coming from beat step controller. The output from the VCO is going into a VCF filter. The output from the and that is just set up there's there's no CV control on that so that's not going to be varying that's that's just a preset filter setting the output from that is then going into a Vactrol and the output from the Vactrol goes to the PT2399 delay the output from the delay goes via the mixer and out to be recorded the gate signal from the beat step, I'm putting it into the gate buffer. Um, it just boosts it a little bit, so some of my systems struggle a bit with the lo lower voltage that comes out of the beat step. Um, so then I take the gate signal and put that as into the trigger on an envelope. The envelope has got a small amount of uh, release and a small amount of attack set on there. And then the output from the envelope is used for the CV control on the Vectrol. And that's about it, really. Um, so it's, we've literally just got a, a single oscillator with a bit of um, filter and an envelope on it um, that we can be able, then I can then run a, a simple sequence through and then start playing around with the controls on the delay module and here just what it can do. So let's move in a little closer. We'll start by looking at what the controls are on the delay module. The yellow control at the top left there is time. On guitar effects pedals that could be labelled up delay so that's the time interval between each repeated echo. Feedback, the green knob there, um, on some pedals that would be labelled repeat, so that controls the number of times that the output signal is fed back to the input signal, so the, the number of repeat echoes that you will get. Mix, in the fully counterclockwise, that will be the dry signal, so that's the input signal without any processing. In the fully clockwise position, that will be the wet signal, which is the processed signal with the delay added. And then somewhere in between, we'll mix in a, an amount of dry and an amount of wet, so you can vary how much of the effect is applied to the signal. Now, what wasn't on the original design by Sam was this bypass switch but on uh, my mammoth module uh, a distortion module i put a bypass switch on that and it was it was useful to be able to switch it in and out on the fly so i thought i'd do something similar with the delay unfortunately um i need to 
think again about how I wire up the switch. I think I oversimplified it a little bit because when I switch it to bypass, which should simply put the input signal to the output socket, um, it actually just cuts the signal off altogether. So um, I've either got a process signal or no signal at all. Uh, yeah, I have to rethink that. Um, maybe look at something like uh, the arrangements that are actually in a, a uh, an FX pedal. I've got a delay FX pedal I can have a look at and look at how the bypassing on that actually works. But that's for another day. For now, it just stays in the non-bypass mode. In other words, the signal will always go through the effects. And then you've got the input socket and the output socket. So as it stands there, um, there's a little bit of time dialed in, a little bit of feedback, but I've got the mix set to um, completely dry. So if I hit a note, that's a dry signal. I'll take that to about halfway, so we've got half and half wet and dry. You should hear that we've got some of the effect coming in there. A bit more. So there we go. Right, let's have a little bit more time. So we can get quite long times on this. Let's take it back down a little bit more. Right, let's bring a little bit more of the feedback in. A bit more. Tell you what, let's take, take it down a little bit. Let's. Uh, Let's run a simple sequence. I'm going to um, run a, a sequence and uh, demonstrate what happens when you start to take the controls to the extremes and you, you kind of get some real kind of crazy feedback going on. But before I do that, I've shown you the simple layout that uh, Sam shared on his website on the Look Mum No Computer. So f follow that link, go and have a look at that and it's a fairly straightforward circuit to follow. Um, the chip, as I say, is certainly in the UK, it's around £1.50, really cheap. So it's a fairly simple layout. It's The components are really cheap. Um, you don't have to put the bypass in, and particularly if you, like me, you, you don't really know what you're doing. Uh, but even so, it's a very useful module, and it can make a world of difference to the sound of your synth. So, yeah, go on, have a go build your own and you can do some crazy things like we're about to hear now.
Thank you.